Okay, so what do you say? Do you say filled? Do you say field? Okay, and so on. And uh, I, loved, I, I can of course wonder what grades would be given, what are being given by uh, other phonetics teachers, or how my teaching um, could be assessed by someone who has a you know, bigger experience, has been teaching uh, phonetics for much, for much longer. I still have no idea. And of course it was difficult, test, and these were testing times for me as well. I had some dental procedures done, I'm wearing braces as perhaps some of you have seen already. Uh, I, I got my uh, braces installed just one week after I, I had begun my class I had to relearn to pronounce certain consonants. Um, I had to learn to use the phonetics laboratory and so on and so forth. Okay, so it was quite difficult for me. So, uh, just briefly on to my conclusions. First of all, old habits die hard. This is a cliché, you know, saying in English. And it's true, there are fossilised errors. Once, for instance, someone learned to say a a or a right? And they did it for many, many years. Well, then at the age of 19 or 20, they arrived at, at university and someone says to them, well, it's not a, it's a. It's a sound that perhaps you've never heard about before. And what do you do? You have to not just learn new things, but unlearn mistakes. And that can be quite painful. Right? And um, so, and my conclusions generally are that RP is still alive. Um, so, this is a, from a part that I didn't really present because of the lack of time. But I believe that RP is still valuable as a model, even if you don't actually force every single person to use RP as a result, and you don't fail everyone who doesn't end up using RP, you still have to show a model, and RP still makes sense. Uh, getting rid of it just because some people believe that it's too aristocratic or too elitist, I believe that's just ideological and not based on any sound practical um, uh, basis. Um, number two, the so-called muscle buttons. So, once again, I recommend Adrian Underhill, because that's his style. And other basics must come before textbook use. So it doesn't make sense to teach students to, to pronounce certain sounds correctly. If you don't make them aware, they can pull their tongue forward, pull it back, they can, uh, you know, they can open their mouth a bit more, close it slightly, they can spread the lips, they can round the lips. Uh, it, uh, I believe it makes sense to teach, especially adults and, and older students, to do this. As a bit like speech therapists, so, actually. And the contrastive approach is useful, as I said, contrasting Polish sh and sh and English sh, and it's an old approach, but I believe it's quite good. And of course, if, you te if you're teaching a multilingual group of people, it doesn't make sense, because if they speak different languages, well, that's impossible. And phonetic laboratory, uh, it needn't be used all the time. It's useful, but you, uh, if you want to force your students to sp spend 90 minutes doing just uh, exercises with the lab, they can get very tired, and even their ears can start hurting after some time. So it doesn't make much sense to force them to do it for 90 minutes straight. Uh, for naming transcription, minimum jargon can be used successfully, that's uh, what I believe. And also, some sounds are more important than others, and you have to be able to choose which sounds to, to pay more attention to. If you teach Swedish learners of English, for instance, teaching them to pronounce R and O and E and O doesn't make as much sense as in the case of Polish learners. Why? Because Scandinavian languages have all these sounds and Polish has no long vowels, actually. Um, and so on, right? And, okay, so, here are my references. If it didn't sound complete, it was because I skipped part two, which was about those ideological claims of just to, some people say, why not to teach phonetics? So, here are my references, and uh, here are the sources from YouTube, and my final ones are that it's still, despite all these problems, it still makes sense to incorporate as much phonetics or as much pronunciation in your classes, it doesn't matter if you're teaching three-year-olds or, or sixty-year-olds, its pronunciation definitely matters and, it, and even the age of computers and internet communication, even online translators, it still continues to matter. Right? 
So thank you very much indeed.